Wednesday is all about PSG against Manchester City. The first leg in Paris, according to the bookies, so it will be Manchester City with the favourites to advance to the final over the two legs. Uh, Julian Laurent uh, joins us as well as Frank and Craig who are still with us. Jules, this is what it's all about, isn't it? As a football fan, you couldn't ask for much more than PSG against Manchester City. No, that's right, Dan. And I mean, after we saw what happened between Bayern and PSG, maybe the two best games that we've had this season, all competitions, all leagues uh, put together, I think this one could be maybe even better. If you think about it, I think PSG will will have a similar approach to the Bayern game, certainly at the start of this first leg. With City, we know it's all about the possession of the ball and, and all that movement. But on paper, it, it will be a fantastic game. I just hope that... The PSG superstars, the Mbappé and Neymar and Di Maria Verratti, who is back for this game, who missed the Bayern Munich uh, clash, by the way, will be at the top as well and be able to take on that City defence. The good thing is, Craig, you've got pretty much both sides at uh, full strength. Yeah, it's just, you said, what, what more could you ask for? I mean, apart from being a full house. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, God, don't put a downer on it. <laughs> well, I mean... What, oh, well, that's that... great. We're looking forward to... Oh, there's no, no one in the crowd. Well, you're, well why, you're, why do you have to do that? Well, because you're normally the guy that sits here and going, these are two great teams, it's going to be a rubbish game. I've never said you that. You do, it every, you do it all the time. Don't, uh, don't do it at all. I'm I... just saying, this is exactly what you want. And you automatically go, well, no one's there. Yeah, because I want fans here. You said but it's exactly not... what you want, and that's not exactly But they're what not there, so let's not go glass half empty. Let's go, oh, glass half full. This is going to be brilliant. I hope so. I do hope so. I'm intrigued by the team lineups, obviously. Which in particular are you more intrigued by? Uh, Manchester City, because I think PSG's is more simplistic if, 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 uh, if he's depending on fitness. Right. I think Manchester City's... Now, it's it, interesting here, this is the, the proposed yeah. signing level, because you and Nadem had a discussion on Sunday about whether or not it should be Laporte or Stone. Well, it was Jürgen G and Frank as well. G uh, given... Well, uh, <laughs> Well, the, 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 the discussion wasn't uh, so much as was it John Stone's going to start because it's a toss of a coin. It was, is John Stone's his form a worry? Right. John Stone's has been excellent for 90% of the season, but it's, I think it's irrefutable that in the last three or four games for club and country, the little mistakes are starting to creep in. I also think the left-back is a toss of a coin, Zinchenko Cancelo. I think Cancelo is the better footballer. Is Zinchenko a better, def better natural defender? And then the one other thing that I'm looking at, and I don't know what will happen, is whether he'll go with two holding midfielders and leave out maybe a Silva or a Mares. So maybe Fernandinho in the side. Wrong. Yes, I, I, he has done that before, not often, but he has done it before this season, primarily because Paris Saint-Germain are such a threat with that pace that we saw against Bayern Munich with about five or six key players out. Jules, I imagine Pep was asked about the possibility of playing a striker in this game. Yeah, he was, and I mean, he, he, he didn't tell us what he will do or, or, or won't do. Uh, he certainly spoke a lot as well about Neymar and Kylian Mbappe, but in terms of, of his own team, I, I, think, I think we can all agree that there will be no number nines tomorrow because in all those big games he plays with a force number nine that has worked so well for them. I think that this team is certainly more used to, play, to playing without someone like Gabriel Jesus or Sergio Aguero, and more with Phil Foden or Kevin De Bruyne or Bernardo Silva or whoever plays in that fourth number nine role, especially in those big games, that I think it would be quite crazy from Pep to, to change that and go with Gabriel Jesus or Sergio Aguero for the game. I suppose, Frank, like City haven't been steamrolling teams. Borussia Dortmund, for example, in the last round we saw just at the weekend against Spurs, where they had a lot of ball but didn't create enough chances in which maybe a striker, if he was on the pitch, he would have taken them. Yeah, maybe, but it's what they, they do and they, they, they've done for, for a while now. Mm. And um, we didn't see most of the, the season Kuna Guerrero uh, and uh, Jesus wasn't, hasn't been very, very good, you know, and efficient when he played at front. So it's maybe the best solution for, for, for Pep Guardiola and, uh, and he knows that he can find his real balance to the, to the team with a Kundogan or, or De Bruyne going forward and finding some spaces behind the defence and scoring goals. I think Gudogan never scored that much goal in, during his own career. Uh, just a word on Laporte, if you, if you, if you may. Mm. That's, that's a big slap in the face. You have to be psychologically very, very good when you're a coach to put the guy who was the man of the match, I guess, uh, was uh, the, the guy who gave you the, the win 
like three days ago and you put him on the bench, I would have been Laporte. I don't know what would have been my reaction. Uh, that's a big slap in the face, really. Yeah, and he seems, he seems I don't know, you, well, you two guys will know him better than me, but he, he seems to be a guy that w would not take that kind of thing particularly well. Uh, who knows what, what Guardiola's going to do? I mean, one of the things he has done since he stepped out of the Bayern, it's the, the Barcelona shoes, in this point in competitions, both these big clubs, Bayern and, and Man City, I think he's tried to overthink things. And he's, he's complicated issues. I don't think we'll see him do that now because kind of know the structure they're going to play. It's interesting, the, most, the easiest part of the team now to pick and select is actually nobody's going to play up front. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? You know, normally you'd be like, nah, Aguero's going to play. Or, you know, that, that's the easiest part of this team to select now. And I think the, the little inclination that, that if you had a smidgen of thought it was going to happen would have been, if Aguero was going to start, I think he would have got half an hour in the cup final, Dan. Yeah. I think he'd have got half an hour for sharpness ahead of this game uh, in, in Paris, but it's not going to happen. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.